Not all rural communities, but many have very similar stories to tell, uh, and, and that is an aging demographic. They're getting older. Uh, they are losing their young people, just like you talked about, about the exit, uh, mostly to post-secondary education, hard to get them back. Uh, one of the bigger issues, though, is newcomer attraction or landing more immigrants into rural communities, which really help the labor market. You've just recently done a report on that. Um, what, what, what are you learning uh, about newcomer attraction for rural communities, and what is the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on that? Yeah, I think it's really exciting to see what's happening around rural immigration in Canada. You know, prior to the 1980s, most rural communities had very limited experiences with international newcomers. That often was reserved for perhaps some specialized uh, professions within our communities, like doctors or nurses, um, or perhaps some international students if your community had a post-secondary institution. But over the last 20 to 25 years, we've seen newcomers choose to settle in rural communities. And it's exciting to find out why they're settling there. Part of it is around employment opportunities and, and sort of jobs that become available in our communities. Part of it is around the cost of living, which is often much less than in an urban area. But the really exciting thing I, I think for myself is that many newcomers are actually choosing to live in rural communities because of the quality of life. There's a, there's a, a joie de vivre in that community that they want to be part of. That's where they see themselves planting their roots, raising their family, becoming engaged in communities. And so for the last 20 years, we're starting to see many rural places create strategies to try to both attract newcomers to their community, but also to think about once those newcomers do arrive, how do we integrate and settle those newcomers so that they choose to stay in that community on the long term and they contribute to the vibrancy of that rural place. And that's exciting. What's challenging now is COVID-19 because many of our rural communities um, have struggled to continue to provide the same provisions to newcomers because we can't meet in person. We can't uh, take people to, to facilities, to the library, to get a, a library card. Um, it's made things more difficult. The other dilemma that are often being encountered is around English as an additional language services. And for many small communities, it's difficult to be able to have a, a center or an office that can provide these services. So many newcomers may actually have to travel to a neighboring regional center. And right now, given the fact that we have so many travel restrictions and guidelines, and for many rural communities, access to high-speed broadband internet is challenging, this has really compromised the ability to both attract newcomers to small towns, but also to retain them there on the long term. And it's unfortunate because we had such a great momentum building uh, and then like many things in the economy and for communities, the pandemic has disrupted a, a lot of things. But at the same time, Jamie, I'd say there's also an incredible amount of innovation that's taking place in small towns around immigration. And so as these dilemmas have been encountered, communities, nonprofits, voluntary groups, faith-based communities have really stepped up to try to find ways to connect newcomers to these services in spite of the pandemic and in spite of lack of broadband access and in spite of inter-community transportation options. And that's really exciting to see how these communities have kind of come together and just delivered new services in ways to respond to those individuals that are part of their community uh, in spite of everything that's happening.